What's up wizards, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to use React with TypeScript. Let's go. To ease the setup a bit, I've created a new Next.js app. I've removed a lot of the default templates and we're just left with a pages index.tsx. Inside our package.json, there's some Next specific stuff which we can ignore. In our dependencies, we have React and React DOM and Types React and Types React DOM. Adding the types lets us use React with TypeScript. Without these, we're basically screwed. Our TS config is pretty busy, but one of the important properties is JSX Preserve. We have several options here, but Preserve is the most up to date one. But if you're working in React Native, you may want to use the React Native one. In React, we split our code into components, which are really just functions which return JSX. Because components are just functions, we can use TypeScript to strongly type them. To create a component that takes no props, just specify no parameters on the component. This means that when you pass it a prop, it's going to yell at you. To add some props to your component, add props here and then annotate it as a certain type. Now, if we pass it the wrong type, then it's going to yell at us. You can do this as a type or as an interface. For component props, it doesn't really matter. You can also declare them in line like this. A common pattern I see in the wild is destructuring on one half and then annotating the type on the other. One wrinkle is if you're building a component library, you should always use interfaces so that they can be extended. But if you're just doing application code, doesn't matter. You can use string unions here to give yourself really powerful autocomplete when it comes to typing certain props. You can express arrays of objects, which is great for data shapes. Then when you pass in the array of objects, you'll get really nice autocomplete. You can use this optional property syntax to express it as optional. So this means you don't have to pass it if you don't want to. You can express functions like this to ensure an argument is passed when the function is called in the component below you can specify a parameter here. Now you'll get autocomplete here too. If you have functions that you need to pass the DOM elements directly, for instance, handlers, then you need to type them carefully. You notice this pattern works, but we aren't taking into account the event. We can try something that looks right by specifying E and calling it mouse event, but it actually isn't assignable. The best thing to do is replace this with mouse event handler, which we get directly from React. We can pass it the exact type of the thing that it's going to be put into, but we actually don't need to. Now, when we use that on click, we actually get autocomplete inside that. There are several of these different types. You can use focus event handler, form event handler. And if you're not quite sure, you can hover over the thing that you're trying to type and it will tell you. If you need to accept children, you can pass in a type of React node. This will let you pass in any child you want to, including multiple children. If you want to make children required, you can remove the optional parameter here. When you're using use state, you're pretty much always going to want to pass a type argument to it. Passing a type argument using these angle brackets means you can specify exactly what's supposed to be inside this state. If you don't pass it a default argument, then it's going to default to user or undefined. Whereas if you pass something in, then you have to pass the entire entire thing in. This means that when we set the user now, it's only going to accept the type you specified. If you want to cheat a little bit, then you can use an as to set it as your default type. Although remember, this is a lie in TypeScript. Use ref behaves similarly to use state. If you don't specify a type, then it will default to undefined. This means that you can't assign it to anything. If we pass it a type, then it will start working. But ref.current will always be number or undefined. We can change this by providing it a default value. Now ref.current is always a number. Use ref has some strange behavior when you pass it null. Suddenly we can't assign to current because it's a read-only property. When you pass null to a use ref, what you're saying to React is I want you to take care of this ref. This is really useful when you want to pass refs to HTML elements. But unfortunately, ref is currently typed as null, meaning we don't get any autocomplete. So we need to pass in the type of the thing that we're referencing. And now we're going to get all of the autocomplete we could ever need. If we get this wrong and specify span instead of div, then it's going to yell at us. And if we specify undefined instead of null, then it's going to yell at us too. This is a really confusing property of use ref, and it's only on the type level. It's just weird, something you've got to memorize. You can create your own custom hooks with React. We're creating a use state here, and we're returning an array containing state and set state. But this is breaking. Well, it's because use home thinks that it returns an array containing possibly number or a dispatch function. It's not returning an array, it's returning a tuple and we need to tell TypeScript that. We can do this complicated type signature or we can remove that and just mark the return statement as const. Now state and set state are both typed correctly. This is a trick you can use not just in a custom hook but in any program. Let's imagine we have a component here that has props.count. We don't need to pass in the count but we want to default it to zero if nothing is passed. We can make a default prop by destructuring props here and saying count equals zero. Now we can reference it by count and we always know it's going to be defined. There is a concept of default props in React, but they're basically deprecated, so this is your best bet. Whenever you're creating a context in React, you're going to want to pass it a type argument. This means that whenever you use that context, this is going to be strongly typed. If you have a parent component that provides this theme context, then you're probably not going to need this default value. One thing I like to do is say theme context type or null. Then I create a custom wrapper called use theme context. This will throw an error if context is null. Now, instead of having to check inside my components, I can say use theme context. And now theme is just the theme context type. Sometimes you're going to have a props type that is different based on different circumstances. For instance, this modal component has a type of either alert or confirm. And we have a prop called confirm button message. But this prop only belongs really in the confirm variant. This means that I shouldn't be able to pass it when we're in the type of alert. If I change the modal props to be a discriminated union, I then don't get autocomplete when I specify a type of alert. And I get an error when I don't pass it in the type of confirm. This pattern is extremely powerful for creating dynamic types in your components. Finally, let's 
let's look at generic components. We have a table component here that takes in an array of data and an on row click function which takes in that row. Currently, these are typed as any. This means that no matter what shape we pass into this data table, the row is always going to be typed as any. We can change this by adding a type argument to table props and changing both of the any's to this t. Next, we can pass the t into table props, but this is currently undefined. We can actually add it to the start of table. It looks like we can't and it looks like this has thrown all of our syntax out of whack, but actually we can either specify it with a comma afterwards or say that it extends any. Now, whatever you pass into the data here will actually be represented in the row. So if I add a name, we'll then be able to console log row.name. This lets you be really smart with the types inside your props definitions. So if you have one prop that relies on the type of another, consider using a generic or use a discriminated union like we saw before. Thank you so much, folks. That was a really, really fun one to do. I've been using React for a long time, so this was great to get off my chest. I got most of these tips from the React TypeScript cheat sheet. So you should check that out if you're looking for more in-depth info. I'll have a video here for you to enjoy and a channel here for you to subscribe to. And if you're interested in more in-depth TypeScript stuff like this, then you should check out my paid course, totaltypescript.com. It goes into absolutely crazy depth about all of these topics and more. Thank you so much for joining along. I'll see you very soon.